What's going on on my YouTube buddies? I'm Jacob with another movie review for you guys. And continuing on in my series of Billy Wilder reviews, in today's video I'll be taking a look at the 1966 comedy, The Fortune Cookie. A cameraman is knocked over during a football game. His brother-in-law is the king of the ambulance chasing lawyers, starts a lawsuit while he's still knocked out. The cameraman is against it until he hears that his ex-wife will be coming back to see him. He pretends to be injured to get her back, but also sees what the strain is doing to the football player who injured him. The Fortune Cookie was released in 1966, and this movie is mainly well known for being the first film to pair Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau together. They became close friends while making this movie and they starred in a bunch of movies together ever since the release of The Fortune Cookie throughout their long and lengthy careers. Some of their collabs were with other Billy Wilder movies which I'll dive into on the project going forward and they've done other movies together outside of Billy Wilder, most notably Grumpy Old Men and The Odd Couple. And I hadn't seen a single one of their collaborative efforts before, and I'm excited to see where that leads, because the biggest strength of the fortune cookie are the two lead performances. Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau are legit great together. In fact, Walter Matthau actually won an Oscar for Best Supporting Actor for this movie, which really shocked me when I saw, when I read that. I'm like, really? Of all the performances of that year he won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actor which shows you how great of an actor he actually was that he committed himself to this over-the-top larger-than-life performance as this hard-nosed lawyer that will do anything and everything to get in his way in true comedic fashion and win an Oscar for that. You tend to not see Oscar wins for comedic performances, so that's actually really impressive. I did enjoy the performances with these two lead characters. Walter, I thought, was the scene stealer of the movie. He had some of the best laughs. Although, I always enjoy seeing Jack Lemmon in these Billy Wilder films, so he was really good in this movie as well. And I'm excited, like I said, to see these two actors and these other collabs they did, especially in some of these Billy Wilder films going forward. Unfortunately, while this movie does have an outrageous premise, which I was really hooked when the movie started. I was enjoying the premise at first, and honestly, the movie got boring to me as it went along. Like, it had a great setup. There's potential for a great comedy. Jack Lemmon, the cameraman, gets injured while shooting a football game. His brother-in-law is the lawyer who's trying to make this ridiculous lawsuit to try to make him and Jack Lemmon rich, pretty much. That's an outrageous premise, and there could have been some great comedic potential with that. But the laughs weren't coming. I was just kind of bored throughout the whole movie. It just felt stale and routine of a movie. Uh, the movie didn't do much to keep me fully invested in the story as much as I enjoyed the two lead performances. I think also, I think making this a two hour movie really stretched its runtime pretty thin. I don't think it's as torturous of a pacing movie as Irma LaDuce was, which was two and a half hours, but I definitely felt the runtime on this one, and I think there's some subplots in this movie you could have easily trimmed out, especially the one with the ex-wife. I did not care for that plot line at all. Uh, that whole romance aspect of the movie just dragged the story out too thin, and I didn't really care about the chemistry between these two characters. It just didn't feel fully earned or believable to me. I wish the movie focused more on the dynamic with uh, his character and his brother-in-law, and also with the uh, football star that we saw in the film who accidentally caused this injury and some of the toll it's led on him and the lack of self-confidence after, you know, being involved in this accident. And, you know, he feels guilty that he hurt Jack Lemmon's character, unaware that he's in the middle of this crazy little scam. I wish the movie dived more into those aspects of the story, which were the more interesting and outrageous aspects, but the stuff with the ex-wife was not good. That 
drag the movie out for me and I wasn't a fan of the melodrama surrounding that whole ordeal. My other big issue with this movie is the movie ends on a weird unsatisfactory note. Yeah, there is closure to it and honestly I got some of the best laughs out of this movie during some of the final moments like uh, Walter Matthau's final scene was hysterical. I really, I really dug that. And Jack Lemmon's little, I guess, confession scene, I guess, for lack of a better term, was honestly pretty hilarious, and I enjoyed the theatricality of what he does in that sequence. But, I don't know, I was just kind of left unsatisfied by the whole thing. Like, the movie ended on such a bizarre note, to where I wish there were more sequences that kind of fleshed out these characters a little bit more, to have a better wrap-up and payoff. To me, it felt like the movie ended like, I don't know, two or three scenes too soon. Because honestly, considering where it was building up, I wish there was a stronger payoff. And I didn't really feel that with the ending that we did get. It was very odd to me. To me, it just felt like Billy Wilder had an idea and he just stopped the movie two days before filming was over. And that's the movie we got. I don't know what actually happened. This is a well-regarded movie, come to find out. Critics did enjoy it back in the day. I saw on Rotten Tomatoes it's sitting at a 96%. So critics really love this movie. And I'm definitely in the minority on the fortune cookie. But I, I guess I can respect it if you do like this movie. There's good aspects to the film. But if you compare this to other Billy Wilder films that came before that, especially some of his comedic efforts, like Some Like It Hot and The Apartment, this falls flat in comparison. I like it slightly better than Irma La Deuce. I don't think it's as torturously long as Irma La Deuce was, and there's a couple aspects that are, I guess, somewhat redeemable about The Fortune Cookie, especially the two lead performances, but the story got more uninteresting as it went along, there was a lot of subplots that I didn't care for at all. The pacing is dry, and I was unsatisfied by the final payoff of this movie. I know I'm in the minority on this movie, much like with Irma La Deuce, but some of these later Billy Wilder films post The Apartment aren't really doing for me. And I think my biggest fear going forward, as we're diving into the new Hollywood era, my big fear is that Billy Wilder's going to struggle to stay relevant in comparison to some of these new generation filmmakers that did some really bold, interesting films in moving the medium of filmmaking going forward from the late 60s onward. I think Billy Wilder kind of got lost in the shuffle, and that's what I'm starting to feel like, especially after seeing movies like Irma La Deuce and The Fortune Cookie. Kiss Me Stupid was okay. That one was a pretty fun enough little comedy, had some annoyances with it, but still a mildly enjoyable film, but definitely not his best. But yeah, Irma La Deuce and The Fortune Cookie, in my opinion, I think are some misfires in his filmography. Though I definitely respect it if you're a fan of some of his later works. They're just not doing it for me personally. So at the end of the day, I'll be giving The Fortune Cookie a two and a half out of five stars. And on the 100-point scale, it's getting a 46 out of 100. So that wraps up my review of The Fortune Cookie as part of my Billy Wilder director project where I'm going through his complete filmography from his directing debut to his last film. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you're a fan of Billy Wilder, I'll leave a link in the description below for my playlist where you can check out all the previous Billy Wilder reviews I've covered on the channel so far. I reviewed a ton of Billy Wilder films at the time of this video. I reviewed Some Like It Hot, The Apartment, Witness for the Prosecution, Sunset Boulevard, Double Indemnity. I did a collab with Ryan Cam on The Lost Weekend. And I reviewed so many other films all the way to The Fortune Cookie. I'm down to the last five Billy Wilder films on my director project. And I'm excited to see the remainder of Billy Wilder's filmography, even though I don't think they'll be as strong as his earlier efforts. It'll still be exciting to check these movies out for the first time. So be on the lookout for my remaining Billy Wilder films coming to the channel real soon. And don't forget to click the link in the description below for my Billy Wilder playlist, where you can check out my past reviews. Join me next time in my Billy Wilder director project, where I'll be taking a look at the 1970 release, The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes. It's fascinating to me that Billy Wilder directed the Sherlock Holmes movie. 
I've never seen this one and I'm really curious to check it out to see if it's really good or not. So be on the lookout for my review of The Private Life of Sherlock Holmes coming to the channel real soon. But if you've seen The Fortune Cookie, let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? But whatever your thoughts are, please be civil and respectful of others. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and the notification bell next to it so you can be notified of future videos. If this is your first video, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. I have some more videos planned for you soon. Hope you all have an amazing day. God bless, and I will see you next time. Goodbye!